The investigation by the SEC, America's stock exchange regulator, into the activities of Goldman Sachs took an awful lot of people in the financial world by surprise. You only have to look at the Goldman share price to realize that. If any bank was beyond reproach, whiter than white, you would have thought it was Goldman Sachs. It's been there, it's been connected at the highest levels of the financial world, the highest levels of government for many, many years. And yet you speak to financial professionals, and a lot of them are saying right now that the activities that Goldman is accused of, are, well, they've been going on for years. It's the sort of thing that investment banks do, that these are sophisticated investors on both sides of the trade. I put that point to Dr. Chizu Nakajima of CAS Business School. But still, I think it, the, the practice that's actually being, uh, or alleged anyway, at least by the SEC, is questionable and certainly is unethical, to say the least, uh, if not, you know, really lacking severely in integrity. So if the SEC would really like to make sure that all the market participants are actually behaving properly, then it's probably not a bad uh, case to pursue. But of course, at the moment, we don't really know uh, to what extent, you know, the SEC has actually been able to effectively gather uh, evidence to be able to back their uh, allegation. And so we have to wait and see. Is this really unethical though? Because these are sophisticated investors on the other side of the trade. They knew what they were doing. I think there was something definitely questionable there. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, and in fact, if you know, we're all concerned about uh, uh, you know, proper conduct in uh, financial services, or rather regaining people's confidence in the financial services se uh, sector, then that kind of practice should not be allowed to continue. And I think SE is very mindful of the fact that, you know, uh, they have to be seen to be really tough on such, uh, in a way, misbehaviour, as it were. And yet you speak to people in the city, they feel this is the way that a lot of deals in the financial sector are done. Why has the SEC picked Goldman Sachs? Mm, I think this election of Goldman Sachs probably has got some certain amount of political, uh, you know, sort of backing maybe. And I um, mean, certainly, you know, the leading firm in the Wall Street uh, to be, you know, targeted really sends out a big message, doesn't it, to not only to the U.S. Uh, financial services sector, but the rest of the world. Uh, even, you know, even Goldman's, you know, get, get into trouble kind of thing. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a message is very uh, loud and clear that uh, they're not going to uh, shy away from uh, big and uh, reputable, as it were, institutions if they have actually, you know, done something wrong. Is this really going to make any difference at all, though, to the way that Goldman operates? I mean, in truth, they weren't going to pull their business away from Goldman Sachs because of this, are they? Not, not necessarily, but, but, but it certainly has, has, is going to do a lot of damage to their reputation, no doubt. Uh, and also, I think, you know, as a kind of financial service industry as a whole, has to really th th think about what the actual implications are, not just in the short term, but in the long term. Particularly if uh, the evidence is, you know, seems to be out there that uh, people have lost real their confidence in the banking system and the financial services sector, and if the industry is indeed trying to regain people's confidence, this is not a, a very good thing to be, uh, uh, you know, reported, is it? But there's no evidence that sophisticated investors, investment professionals, have lost confidence in Goldman's because of this, is there? Well, I don't think we should actually talk about this case actually just in, in the context of Goldman's. I think it is Goldman Sachs really. It is really more to do with what the future of the financial services industry is, whether it's actually seen as doing good or actually doing harm. And I think that is really what is uh, at stake now. Um, it's not just people losing confidence in the system, but also there's been, a, a, you know, obviously a lot of uh, cry for, uh, you know, more regulation. But I still think that regulation alone is uh, not, I really think that regulation alone is not going to change people's behaviour. It's, you know, anything that's unethical, or lacking in eth you know, ethical behaviour or integrity has to really come from, you know, sort of uh, uh, rethinking in what is the function, for instance, of finance. And also, we probably have to review what is actually the role of regulation in all this as well. We do need a certain amount of regulation, of course, to uh, state that what is the bottom line. But certainly, it, you, we should not be relying on regulation or more regulations to, to regulation to, pe pe uh, to change people's behaviour or indeed to make people more ethical. To an extent, is this about the regulator, which was charged with the job of protecting people before the financial crisis, actually 
trying to shift the blame away from itself? I think we're all to blame actually for the current mess that we found ourselves in because you know whilst everybody seemed to be making money nobody questioned any behavior uh, and, and indeed it wasn't just the uh, you know the, the, the regulators but it's actually general public that probably uh, need to rethink too because we were quite happy to allow all these you know institutions to carry on and uh, you know people are making a lot of money but you know we didn't really try to what, curtail their pays or you know bonuses did we it was only when things started to go wrong did we actually start to think well why are they you know doing so well whilst we're all suffering from the not just the current downturn, downturn but uh, indeed you know people losing you know jobs but is there an element here of the the regulator perhaps trying to win the PR battle? I think to a certain extent, yes. But it is difficult to actually detach, detach regulation from politics because regulators, you know, with the best will in the world, they're still dictated by, you know, what policymakers dictate to them. And they are only to really implement, carry out the policies that have been decided by policymakers. So it's not just in the US, but it's the same in the UK or anywhere else in the world. Uh, they still have to serve, you know, as it were, uh, the needs of what, well, as it were, the government. So, you know, whether it's actually just prior to the election, as in the case of the UK, or whatever is the situation currently prevalent in the US, uh, do influence the way that perhaps regulators, uh, you know, act at that particular point in time. So is this more about what the government's trying to do than what the regulator's trying to do? Um, there may be an element of uh, truth there too, because at the end of the day, if the general public you know, look to the government to actually take a decisive action, what could they do but to actually turn to the regulator to then take that decisive action? And of course, how it's actually then uh, reported in the media and all that would all depend very much on the timing as well. So. What happened, for instance, in regard to the, to in, the whole spate of insider dealing uh, arrests and obviously pro successful prosecutions uh, by the FSA in the UK just prior to the announcement of the election date, uh, well, obviously is an example, I think, of perhaps um, these things being somewhat influenced by the political situation at the time. Dr. Chizu Nakajima, thank you very much indeed.